the floor is yours and um, you've got. Yeah, I didn't realize I just need to unmute. So I guess, can everybody see my screen? So I, I tried to, to shorten it and spice it up because I think some of y'all have actually seen um, my presentations and, and I haven't really refreshed much. Uh, still doing a lot of the working at home because we still have lots of people doing so. Um, so I just thought I'd tell you who Bit by Bit is. Um, you know, I, of course, Robert Blake, Bit by Bit. I opened this office, uh, just realized 14 years ago. Uh, Bit by Bit on the whole has um, been in business since 1987. We, um, you know, started out in software development. Uh, so we still have a very big um, or very strong uh, development arm um, and do a fair amount of stuff. We actually just finished up a pretty large project for uh, the Mayo Clinic. Some of you may have heard, heard of that. Uh, we are a full, full service IT company. And, uh, yeah, but we do manage services and backup. And what managed services is, it's a little bit different from, you know, break fix. You, you call us, we fix it. That's kind of what, uh, you know, a lot of people do with their cars. They hear a noise, then they take it in. Then you have some people that, How do you get rid of your phone? Oh, no, no, I can't say that. Hold on. Silence your phones for the presentations. Uh, that was silenced and unfortunately coming through my computer because she keeps calling back. <laughs> <I'm just playing. laughs> we're, we're having a stoppage at one of our, at our other office. So any, anyway, um, you, know, you have two different kinds of people. You have people that take their, their car in for maintenance on every time it's scheduled. And then you have people that take it in whenever it's smoking and, and burning up. Uh, we really focus on, on companies that are looking at building a good foundation and really taking care of that car or really building a foundation for a good, good uh, uh, building or structure. So we actually, we monitor uh, the computers, we make sure the backups are running. You know, we have a, a uh, specific group that's assigned to watching the backups and making sure they run every night. Uh, and if they fail for whatever reason, we either have someone on site or we figure out why it's not running. Um, and we monitor hard drives and, and things like that. Uh, so we're really maintaining uh, all of your systems. We also work with a business to help them plan, you know, what's coming, if they're growing, if they're expanding, you know, if they're buying a new business and need to implement or integrate those with their current uh, infrastructure, um, we help them plan for that. So we also do voice and fax. So we have uh, hosted phone, IP phones uh, that we do. Uh, we're actually still very big into the fax market, uh, unless you're Blue Cross, Blue Shield, um, American Airlines company, uh, DR Horton actually has a lot of faxing going on, big insurance companies. Uh, those are actually a, a lot of our clients. We have a group that specifically focuses on facts. Uh, I'm actually part of that group, uh, even though my main focus is, um, you know, managed IT services. Uh, my background, for those of you who do not know, is document management and workflow solutions. That's kind of where facts uh, comes into play. We do have a full cybersecurity suite, everything from, you know, hey, I need a firewall to true penetration testing, actually monitoring, uh, understanding what's going on in your system, um, making sure that we're protecting you against ransomware, uh, data extraction, things of that nature. So as I mentioned, we do uh, the application development uh, workflow. Uh, one of the things that we've, we've done in the world, uh, if you're a, a truck driver, you have to get a, a DOT exam every year. Uh, we actually wrote a application for a client that we ultimately spun off into a national uh, product that the drivers go in, take their, take their DOT exam with the doctor. They fill out all the stuff on an iPad. Um, doctor gets it, does his stuff, checks everything off, and it notifies the DOT and prints uh, their certification card and then notifies their employer that they did pass and then goes ahead and reminds them later on uh, when it's time for them to, to get renewed. Uh, so that's one of the, our, our kind of big things that we've done that has a little bit of notoriety behind it. 
headquartered in New York. We have additional offices in Boston, New Jersey, Texas, and Vermont. Uh, we have uh, just just about 60, 65 people right now, I think. Uh, this kind of sums up the areas that uh, bit by bit um, kind of touches. So we do our managed service division, uh, cloud solutions, so Office 365, Adobe, uh, on, you know, hosted storage, things of that nature, the hosted phones and fax, cybersecurity, uh, our security operations centers where we monitor uh, all of our clients, uh, business workflow process and application development. So what I wanted to talk to you about today is passwords. And this is something that no one really has a grasp on. Everybody says, oh, I've got the greatest one or I've got the worst one. Uh, I'm not showing the video today just because I wasn't sure uh, how, um, how it would play online. Um, but everybody has bad passwords, including some of the people that, that I've coached for years. And I'm even guilty from time to time of having one that I probably shouldn't have. But these are the most common passwords. Uh, somebody pipe in and say if they have one of these uh, so I can chastise them. Uh, I see this one quite often, one, two, three, four, five, six. Password is still used. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, of course, couldn't guess that. You know, computers are going through all this stuff. They're able to figure out what you got. So if it's out of the dictionary, or if it's a numeric value, they can find it pretty quick. Uh, unless you have some specific things in place to lock things down as people are trying those passwords. One, two, three, four, five. This is a real secure one. Nobody would ever guess one, 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 one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the, these were actually sampled in 2020. Um, so they were a little bit different from last year. Uh, did have which ones went up and down. Sunshine is a popular one. QWERTY is one. That's one I'm guilty uh, early on in my computer life. I used to do QWERTY because I could just go whoosh, across the top of the keyboard and enter in my password. I love you is one. Uh, princess, admin, welcome. One of my clients still uses welcome. I'm finally getting them off of welcome. Um, in fact, never mind. Uh, ABC123 is one. So if you're doing that, change it. If you're using your passwords in more than one place, change it. And it's not because whenever they hack your password for Facebook, they're gonna change all your stuff. It's the fact that you're using that same password on Facebook for your Bank of America. Because what they're going to do is they're gonna go use your username, which is generally your email address and they're going to use your password and they're going to go over to Bank of America and they're going to try that. Oh, Becky, you of course use Frost Bank, right? So they're going to go over to Frost Bank because it didn't work at Bank of America. And guess what? If you're using the same password at Facebook that you're using at Frost Bank, I just got into your Frost account and I just transferred a whole bunch of money out as quickly as possible. This is what they do. If you don't catch that bank transfer within 24 hours, say goodbye to your money. So an easy way for you to, to remember a password, start with a phrase that you can remember. I, I used every good boy does fine. Case lowercase, so as you see here, uh, then go in and add some numbers. Um, you know, some, some people, if, you, if it's a long enough phrase, they'll change like an I to a one, some things like that. Um, you can add it to the end. This is something that I do based on say this. Uh, go ahead and then add some symbols. You can add them to the end, you can add them in the middle, but all of a sudden you have something that is absolutely random that no one could possibly guess, or at least not guess in, you know, a hundred years, a million years, uh, depending on how long that, that key is. But all of you can remember this phrase and then you can start to remember what you did to that phrase. You know, take your favorite quote, take something out of a book, Mark Twain, you know, something somebody said to you as a kid, but you can do that, take the first letter of it, then you always remember it. Um, but that's what you do. And there's ways, if you think about it, to even do a different password for each website. So Microsoft, my, 
my password for my Microsoft stuff actually has something similar to this. And then I have MS at the end, so it's Microsoft. And then I may use that exact same password for something else, but it'll have whatever that other password is. Uh, so there's easy ways to do it. Whatever you do, you know, you might might have to change it up a bit. Some some require eight. I ran into one the other day. Uh, my duo password had to be 12 characters, um, which was a nightmare. So I had to do it like four or five times to get one that I could remember. Uh, so you might have to change it a bit. So if you're using the same passwords on multiple sites, be careful, make sure you change them. If you're using easy passwords, go change them. If it's in the dictionary, you really need to go change them. Um, it's really important. Cybercrime right now is on the rise. They're saying four to 500%. Uh, if you follow my posts and my blogs, I've actually posted many, many samples uh, of these fraudulent emails uh, that are coming through for phishing, things like that. So be careful what you're doing out there. Um, one thing I say in almost every presentation that I do, uh, because it's truly important, don't click on things you don't know. Oh, that there's three rules that are so important because it doesn't matter how much money you pay me, I can't protect you from you. If you're going to make that click, you're going to get that virus. You're going to get that ransomware. That means that if you don't have everything in place, we, we may be able to, you may not be able to recover from it. If bit by bit's handling your services, we have proper backups, we're monitoring those, and we can handle ransomware. Second thing, don't click. Guess what the third thing might be? No. Oh. To me, this is one of the most important things that I tell end users all the time. If it looks suspicious, even if it doesn't, be very careful if you're not expecting it. Uh, I like to use the, the um, um, example, if at the end of this call, you get an email from me that says, here's my bill, don't open it. Y'all weren't expecting a bill from me. Shouldn't be sending you one. If we're doing business, that's a different story. But be careful what you click, even if you think you know who it's from. If you hover over links, you can see if they're legit. Uh, if you don't know or not sure, go directly to the website. Don't use the phone number off that email. Go to the website, get the phone number to Bank of America, get the phone number to Corey Calloway. Don't use what's on the email if it's suspicious. I like that look that I'm getting. Uh, with that, be happy to open it up to questions. Hope that uh, leaves y'all with about 15 minutes in your day, and I hope that it was helpful. I have a question, <clears throat> Robert. Yes, I know you touched on the application development. Um, so, application development, you guys do software development. Correct. So, can you like, I guess, for the people understand um, what the difference between because there, there's multiple applications, there's mobile applications, there's you know. Uh, website application kind of go into a little bit more detail of like all the different types that you can develop absolutely and, and you know while bit by bit can can design a website for you and do that stuff it is not our bread and butter and we normally bring in a partner to do that whenever you're looking at websites that's graphics intensive that's making it pretty looking good the back end of that what runs your shopping cart which now there's plugins for shopping carts, so I wouldn't recommend building one of those either. Um, but your contact database that's running your insurance company. Uh, one, one thing that I talked to someone about, and I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, but he, he was an insurance company and he had multiple steps in the insurance, proper, uh, insurance process. So a claim comes in, he had to, gather the pictures for the claim. He had to get the statements for the claim. He had to get, get the police report. So all of these different things come in before he could send it off to that next step. Uh, so we actually, we, we developed something for him to actually kind of keep up with that. Uh, so if you have a business process that needs help or something that is, has multiple steps to it that you're currently doing manually or 
you have a lot of the disparate systems that you're taking a single piece of paper and you're entering things in four or five different times. Those are different applications um, that you might uh, do software development around. Uh, I, again, my background is mainly workflow, so that's really what I know. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've done in uh, New York was uh, basically a Uber Eats kind of application uh, for a client. And you went on their website, you went and, you know, typed in what you wanted, you ordered with, you know, everything, you hit the button, then it printed out at their locations in New York, and then they, they delivered it to you. You know, so that, that's a type of application that you might uh, uh, look at. You know, one that we did uh, actually recently that's a bolt on uh, to our 3B exam application is a um, uh, COVID screening app. So essentially, if you have a lot of workers coming in or, you know, employees, things like that, that need to be screened every day, you can send them the um, um, link to the application. They type in, no, haven't been out of the country, no, haven't been exposed, no, haven't been this, so on and so forth. Then whenever they come in, you know, you're the first one through the door and Brian, I pull up your name, I check your temperature, you're 98.9 or whatever your temperature is supposed to be. And I write that down, you're cleared to work for the day. The following day you come in and I write it down, you're 98.9. Then there, you know, as a company that saves me liability and it makes it very easy to track. Um, you know, again, it's one of those things that kind of eliminates paper. You know, um, it, it's really limitless of, of what you can do. Uh, on the application side. Uh, but whenever you have, you know, the, the development, you know, you all work in a CRM. Well, that's very heavy on the application development side, um, on the database side. Whereas you might have something that's doing workflow, you might have something that's um, doing, you know, pizza delivery, things like that. All of that may interface with a beautiful website, but the back end has to have some uh, mechanics behind it. Hopefully I explained that reasonably well. Robert, I have a question about Apple products. Whenever I see an email that I don't know who it came from, uh -huh. I'll open up on my iPhone because I feel like on the iPhone I'm protected. Is that just a, a myth? I'm uh, adding another computer in our office. I'm thinking about getting an iMac. That right. uh, Macs are less susceptible, and your iPhone is certainly less susceptible, but don't get in that comfort zone because people know that it's less susceptible. Uh, Apple keeps very tight reins on their iPhone applications, uh, so it's hard for some, harder for somebody to get in. Apple is based on Unix, and there, there's kind of um, safeguards in place on your Apple product. So there have been some ransomware cases. There have been some uh, attacks on, on Mac that have been successful. Uh, so don't get complacent, but yes, they are more secure. Um, be glad to show you sometime or, or point you to my website that'll show you, or actually it's my blog, my personal blog, that'll show you some examples of uh, phishing and malware and things like that to look for. But it all goes back to that thing. If you're concerned enough that you think you need to open it on something else, I would delete it and not open it. Okay. I, I mean, really, I, I get stuff all the time that um, I look at and it's like, hey guys, check out this new one. Uh, one of them right now is, is going out telling you that your Office 365 account is about to be deleted. And it looks official, absolutely, you know, they, they've done their work. And I was like, hey, Darren, check this out. Well, Darren, Darren's the guy that, that works in the other office here, um, which is one of our level three techs. But it was really good. Like, hey, yeah, we should probably warn people. So I took pictures and it, it, I put it on my blog. Um, you know, I, I had one one time uh, from Fidelity that just happened to come at the same time I was trading on my Fidelity account. And it said, your account is locked. <laughs> and I came real close to clicking it, uh, but I actually did what you, you just said, and I put it on a secure computer. 
and I did follow the link. So I actually had pictures of what I was able to see. Uh, and it took me to a perfect fidelity site that you would not have been able to tell the difference, except if you looked at the web address, you could actually see that it was the wrong one. Uh, had I have entered in my credentials there, they would have uh, cleaned me out. And at the time uh, that I took those pictures, Fidelity and probably none of the trading companies really had two-factor authentication or any of the safeguards that they have today to where you can make it harder to transfer money out of your accounts. So it goes back to those three rules. Don't click. Hey, Robert, it's David. Um, what's your uh, blog? Blog. My personal blog is three. Good question. <laughs> uh, 3boffice.com, I believe. Yep. www.3boffice.com. Cool. Thanks. So it also has the bit by bit blog there on the right. But, uh, I, I put a lot of stuff that I glean and, and find and sources and such. Um, and some of it's kind of random, but most of it has to do with security and, and computer stuff. And I typically write uh, at least one uh, pretty major blog article every month. Um, everything from the password uh, thing is up there. Uh, why you need a managed IT security company, you know, <coughs> why you need to outsource or why you need to pay attention to your uh, cybersecurity plan. You know, hey. cybersecurity plan for a one person office than there is for a 50 person office. So, yes. I, I have a question real quick and you may want to tell me not publicly. I, I don't know, but I was just curious how much you would charge if I wanted to sit down with you or somebody that, you know, a partner of yours or something. And basically like, I know the basics of how to use a computer, uh -huh. But there's like little nuances of security and that kind of stuff that I could figure out and I just have never taken the time to do it. And I would so much rather pay you or somebody that you want me to pay to just tell me, click this, click that. Okay, you're done. I don't imagine it would take more than an hour. I really have no idea. Would you do that kind of thing? And how much would you charge? Well, I, I will tell you that on, on the whole, that is not normally what Bit by Bit does. Uh, sure. we, we focus on businesses. Uh, I am more than happy to sit down with you over lunch sometime or, or even dial in sometime and take a look at what you got and, and give you a couple pointers. Um, I tend to do that for, for business partners, networking and things like that, because I think if I'm top of your mind, you will probably refer me business one day. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So be more than happy to take a look at what you got, maybe give you a couple pointers. Uh, and we don't even have to meet up for that. I have the ability to dial into your computer uh, since y'all are on my Zoom call, I can connect all your computers now. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, we have software that I can send you a link and I can, I can actually log into your computer and see it. Uh, you, we can also do it on Zoom and I can direct you that way. Okay, awesome. Well, I will, I don't know if I have your personal phone number. Can I well, shoot guess you a what? text? That is a perfect segue into the fact that I put all my right. Calendly uh, up on our Facebook Robert, site. Robert, it's Becky. Um, it's, I raised my hand. Oh, sorry. Is it okay if I ask you a question? Yeah. Let, re, re, hold on just a second, real quick. Uh, I did put my Calendly link on our Facebook, requesting one-on-ones with everybody. Uh, I can post that out there again, but I would love to kind of meet and learn more about everybody in general. Some of you I know about and just like to learn more, and some of you I've never actually got to talk to. Um, and if you haven't used Calendly, you should try mine out just to meet with me and, and you should probably use it yourself. Yes, Becky. Uh-oh. Becky? And you made her mad. I guess. Becky there. <laughs> oh no, she dropped. No! Mm. I had a question, Robert, while Becky gets back on real quick. Yeah. Um, so going back to passwords, you know, I use a lot of different systems for work and they all require passwords. I, you know, personally, websites that I use that require passwords and it's really hard 
to remember a different password for different systems and different websites and stuff like that without uh, I find myself writing it down, which I know I shouldn't, but I understand that there are certain apps that you can uh, buy or get to that will store all your passwords that you use for different Absolutely. systems and stuff. Is there a recommendation that you have along those lines? And are, are those really secure enough? Because uh, I personally use uh, Dashlane. Uh, LastPass is on there. Um, there's a couple, um, I can't think of them off the top of my head. Uh, do your research, check the reviews. Uh, both of those I know are good. The way that they work and the way that they remain secure is uh, they actually utilize your local uh, password as a key. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what unencrypts those passwords on their website. So if they don't have your key, they can't get into it. And even if they were able to get into yours, they wouldn't be able to get into everybody else's. Um, knock on wood, hopefully no one ever gets one of those because that would be just a treasure trove of information. Right. Uh, but I do know that uh, we recommend those to our customers, especially if they have problems with that, certainly over um, writing them down because if anybody ever finds that book, it's also gold. Yeah. Um, what, what was the first one you mentioned again? Uh, Dash Lane. Dash Lane. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. Uh, and Becky sent me what her question is. I don't know if she came back on the line. Uh, her question is, but for things like Panera Restaurant, is it okay to use the password that Google suggests and let it remember it? That's, that is a double-edged question. Uh, I do happen to use Google and let it suggest and remember my password or more aptly, I use my, my Apple or my Mac and it suggests and stores my password. I will also warn you that a really good hacker can get onto your computer and they know how to get that information and can get access to your passwords in the snap of a finger um, Kevin Mitnick uh, is a company that uh, owns a company that we uh, represent called Know Before, which is end user training, which is where I got that one click thing. Um, but he was the world's best hacker at one time, maybe still is, um, went to jail for it, um, now out and actually is on the, on the right side of the law. Uh, but I have seen him get on a computer on a webinar uh, that he's never been on before, open up somebody's computer, go click, 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 pull the password and go boom, and they're in. Um, so as long as you're doing the other precautions that somebody cannot get into your password, you should be covered. So I I'll hope say, that answered your question. I'll, I'll answer Becky separately later on. I th I'm not sure what happened to her. Well, awesome. Uh, thank you, Robert, for the, the presentation today. And I think that everybody got a lot out of it. I know that we have been discussing a few things and I might have some other questions for you. Um, if you guys do have any more questions, I ask that you do um, uh, on Brian, a basis. Yes. This is Stan. I was the corporate spy at Massey Services. I couldn't get you to hear me. <laughs> hey Stan, how are you? Would you like to do your three second uh, commercial? <laughs> uh, no, I'll do it next week. I just wanted to let you know it was me, the corporate spy. <laughs> we found our perpetrator. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stan. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad you made it, and I'm glad everybody here made it. Um, we do have one uh, thing that I do want to say before we leave. I do need a speaker next week. Uh, I'm looking at the speaker for next week and we do not have a speaker for next week, nor do we have one for the 25th or the second. So if you are interested, I did email everybody a link to uh, sign up genius. Please go ahead and, 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 uh, and somebody sign up for next week, at least so we can have uh, somebody for next week. Um, other than that, I know there's gonna, I think there, is there a Facebook live after this for the chamber? I'm pretty sure there is. Um, so that's why I'm trying to get everybody yeah, off. On, 
So uh, yeah, there is one. Okay, so um, take a look at the Chamber Facebook page. Let's make sure that we support their Facebook Live today. And thank you guys for all jumping on today. Um, let's have a great week. Um, and let's continue passing business to each other. Um, use Facebook to refer each other. I Here's one thing. Here's just my advice really quickly. I have other networking groups. And what we've been doing is recommending each other on Facebook, looking at different groups, and just, just tagging our Facebook pages or personal um, so that people are getting those those con communications. So con it, there's multiple ways to refer each other. So let's continue to refer each other, uh, um, through, whether that's digital or passing leads. And let's have a great week, guys. Thank you guys for joining, and we will see everyone next week. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hey, Robert. Hey. I wasn't sure if you saw the message. Are you free right after this? Uh, I'm not. Okay. Uh, um, I will schedule on your calendar then. Okay. That will be great. Awesome sauce. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. -bye. I was like, yeah, just continue. Hurry up. Uh, hello, Sean, Brian, and uh, and Heather, I think. Yep, that's me. Uh, Morning. You got to make this where I don't enable the waiting room. Better yet, I'm the only computer guy that I know that does not have access uh, on his desktop computer for a, a video. However, I am doing the presentation today, so I get to uh, do it. Too lazy to open up my laptop because then you'll see my messy office. So, Sean, did you get the link that I sent you about the uh, Sandler sales training? Sean's disappeared on me again. Okay, come on. Rotate me. Do we really have nobody on screen right now? I'm working on it. There we go. Star Wars. Okay. Yay. I figured I'd be captured. By I fi the finally Star replaced Wars my pa order. face with the logo. So that and trying to, you know maneuver my phone. Hi, Angie. How are you? Boy, nobody loves me and talking to me today. I'm, I'm hurt. Well, Robert, it does not appear <laughs> that I got your, your email. Oh, uh, check your spam folder. Um, it, it was just something that I ran across that I, I know, uh, Scott at Sandler Training, um, and he does some things from time to time. I think some other people do too. Uh, I, I actually watched it a couple weeks ago and actually got some good little tips out of it, especially during COVID. Thought you might like it.
Actually, since I got time, I'll try to pull it up and resend it. Tell you what, let me. I just put posted an, a new email address. It's more reliable than my, my AFLAC one is right now. Oh, okay. If I got that top of mind here, have not got it yet. I don't do that. Hi, hey, Sam. How are you? I am well. How are you? Never better. Great. Got my new hand sanitizer. And yeah, you need that with the group <laughs> here today. I wouldn't want you to spread any germs to us. Yeah, I wouldn't want to spread any germs digitally. Yeah. Oh, that's called a virus. <laughs> And I am protected. So, so that has your logo on it. You keep flashing it up there too quick. I yeah, just, yeah. It, uh, uh, Digital Corporate did these for me, and I just, I just got them yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if Dad is going to be here today or not. So, Dwayne, um, he's at home. Dwayne did send me a message saying that he would feel ill. So, if I could run the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Robert, we finally figured out how to share the screen last week. Did you figure? Did you see that? Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> Took me about five minutes to figure it out. I was like, "Oh no, I messed up by by leaving." Um, and, and the sad thing is, it my it was me taking my wife to to um, the doctor, so it took me a bit to actually leave so i was still there and but i had everything on mute and because i was recording everything so I saw yeah. that. does this thing well, have if a you're, if you're a co-host you can share get you can allow them to share their screen under the advanced sharing options well i i'm the presenter today i was going to bow out today and looked up and it's my turn it what was worse is I looked up and I realized that all the presentations that I had, actually, I think I've done for you guys. Um, so I very quickly I missed it last night and had problems with my life. I got it. I got it. Uh, but anyway, I've just redone one uh, that's nice and short that I think will be helpful. So as people are coming on, I did something last week and, and I'll say thank you again. I unfortunately don't know who all has done so already, but I posted a link to my Google um, profile and asked for, for reviews and, and, and such. I highly recommend that we do that uh, for one another. I think we've requested that at one point or another, but any other networking groups and people you know, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, as well as your Google, it really helps your uh, listing rating. Uh, Brian can probably attest and even speak better to that than I can. You are correct. <laughs> Between having all this time to myself to read up on it and listening to your webinars, I, I will say that I'm a, a knowledgeable amateur at getting things posted now. I'm glad somebody's taking advantage of my webinars. I, I have gotten some some very good tidbits out of it. And some of it I knew and you know if, if you don't uh, if you don't take sales trainings and read sales books and go to these webinars and things like that you just kind of get in a rut and don't remember some of the things that you know and you know I know like listening to your your webinars like oh yeah I knew that. But I hadn't been doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. hearing it over and over again really makes you start 
doing what the things that you need to do. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if you've, you've done it. I think, uh, isn't it official? You're now the doing some marketing for river legacy now. Not yet. I haven't heard anything from Becky. Oh, well, you might've spilled beans, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe well, I think you may be doing some uh, for stuff for River <laughs> Legacy. Um, don't hold me to that. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we'll take care of them. So it, it, at least I hear that you had good stuff. I think uh, Rich Froelich is also going to be doing some stuff for him. Good. Good. Oh. We got 15 people here in attendance. Um, we're going to wait three more minutes for some stragglers. John Thatcher is trying to log in. Now, the only thing I changed on the meeting, I did make it to where there's no waiting room, um, mainly because that's annoying um, whenever you're actually watching who comes on. But I also did make it to where it mutes you as you come in. Uh, so if you're not able to talk, be mindful that you were muted as you came in this time. <laughs> I actually was able to get on immediately. That's surprising. Awesome. Scary. <laughs> Picking up this technology stuff. Uh oh. Yeah, about the time that you get really, really good at it, we're going to start having face to face meetings again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, I'm good at it. Oh, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> well, fortunately for me, Robert, you know, because we do so much business across DFW and Mm -hmm. outskirts in Waco, you know, Zoom is our best friend. Yep. I, I, in some ways, I hope that we keep it. I just got to find me a good camera. Um, you still, still, they're very hard to find. Oh, yeah. They, I, I, try, I just try to go to Best Buy and they're all out of stock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I had no luck with that. I did get one over the weekend from Amazon um, and it's, it's been helping me through class. Well, I have one on, on both my laptops, so I have one. I just, yeah. it's much easier for me to sit at my desk with my multiple screens and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I upgraded just so like the kids would see me better. It's like, eh, the, the laptop camera is decent enough, but I invested. So out of curiosity, has anybody, has anybody been watching after the fact or sharing the video presentations that have been posted up on, on our group? I, I watched last week when I come cool. make it. Good. So. Well, all righty then. Um, let's go ahead and get this party started. Um, I'm going to ask for <laughs> Amanda's <laughs> doing the hand thing. Uh, I'm going to ask that, uh, Robert, if you help me out with the technical side, and I'm going to run this meeting uh, to the best of my ability. Um, with that being said, um, Dwayne is feeling ill today, so he did you know, reach out to me today to ask if I could go ahead and monitor today's meeting and run the meeting. So hopefully we'll have a lot of fun today. Um, we're going to start off with our 30 second commercials and we'll go ahead and go around the room, starting with Robert Blake. Uh, thank you. I'm Robert with Bit by Bit. I actually have the presentation today. So we, we manage uh, our clients' technology and secure their data. So if your computer is giving you a fit, call Bit by Bit. Thank you, Robert. We're going to go down. Uh, we got Sam Elliott and then Amanda Richardson. You're on deck. So Sam Elliott. Hi there, I'm Sam Elliott of Schooley Mitchell of uh, We help our clients in four different ways. We help them with their telecommunications. We help them with their small package shipping. We help them with their um, waste cost management and we help them with their credit card processing. Uh, we save our average client about 28% in their fees and we share those savings 50-50 and we don't take any of your money until we generate those savings for you. That's Sam Elliott, Schooly Mitchell, and thanks for my nice uh, hand sanitizer, Digital Corporate. I came and picked it up yesterday. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Sam. Amanda. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanda Richardson, and I'm from McKnight Insurance Services. So if you know anyone that's uh, interested in uh, looking for a new, a new policy or is tired of their old uh, agent, uh, send them our way. Once again, I'm Amanda with McKnight Insurance Services. Let the McKnight shield you from life's little upset. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. We're going to have uh, Corey go next. And after Corey, it's David Curtis. Corey, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, just when you think the market's skyrocketing again, it goes back down. We're off about 5%. If you're wondering what the heck to do, give me a call. Let me know. Callaway Financial Services, assisting damsels in distress, finding our way through these crazy stock markets and everything else. And remember, no business is too small. No check is too large. Before you give away, call Callaway. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Corey. Um, now people are all jumping on, so the list is like getting very disorganized. But I, I, I had David Curtis, you're up next. Hey, everybody. David Curtis with Hops HR, your local HR consultant. I'm here to help you through all those crazy regulations, policies, processes, strategy once you start hiring employees or when you have employees. I'm running a special right now on my HR. Plan. Pay 10%, you get 10% off. Uh, this audit covers over 100 different items, recruiting, hiring, onboarding, your employee relations, policies, compensation, benefits, uh, you know, anything and everything HR related. Get a nice detailed report on, you know, where you're not compliant, where, where you are compliant, and, uh, you know, how strong your HR practices are. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, thanks. Awesome, thank you. And we're gonna go on over to, to Becky uh, Nussbaum, Jero, and then on deck is Heather Lee. Hey everybody, um, it's Becky with River Legacy Foundation. And I'm so glad to be here with you today. I missed you from last week. Um, I want you to know that over at River Legacy, we help people fall in love with nature. And one of the best ways to do that is we have virtual summer camps. So it's bringing, woohoo, it's bringing nature to you in your inbox. It's for kiddos age three through sixth grade, and we have camp going on. It started on Monday, getting rave reviews. We have three more weeks of camp scheduled, and we're working on one with the Parks Department. So this is Becky with River Legacy. Let me know if you want to hear about summer camp virtual. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. All right, Heather Lee, you're, if the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Heather with Primo Travel Services. And um, let's start planning your vacation for those slow months at the beginning of next year. Hopefully, um, next week, Michelle and I will have um, some fun announcements. But other than that, Heather with Primo Travel Services. And since Dad isn't here, I'm also with Southern Flare Photography. Um, we are, we're back open and accepting clients and I'm currently working on a senior album. So, um, if you need a good headshot for a new profile photo, um, social Saturdays are it. We post our, um, the background for each week, every week. So, um, pick your background and come on in. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. We're going to move on to David Berg and after David Berg will be Jennifer Payne. David Berg. Good afternoon. This is David Berg with Colored Professional Floor Care. We are happy to clean anything that you put your feet on and more, and we are still doing the disinfectant. And as you see in the background is our uh, rotary float. Everyone is welcome to come right on the float. Brian, you know, a lot of fun. Uh, Colors Professional Floor Care, David Berg, thank you so much. All right, I will definitely take you up on that offer, David. Um, that being said, let's go over to Jennifer Payne. Hey, everybody, it's Jennifer with Price Right Trees. Um, you know we do commercial and residential um, landscaping and tree removal, and we are still hiring. So if you know anybody looking for a job, please send them our way. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Jennifer. Um, we're gonna move over to John Thatcher, and after John Thatcher, I'll pass it over to Justin Peepgrass. John Thatcher. Hello, everybody. How you doing? <clears throat> My name is John Thatcher. I'm with Best Value Plumbing. I do all kinds of plumbing service and repair. 
and I'm open for business and I miss everybody and can't wait till we can uh, all meet in person and uh, share some lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, John. Well, we miss you too, John. Nice to see you again. Uh, you. Justin, Pete Grass. All right. Good, good morning, good afternoon. Justin Peatgrass, CPA. So a few things we wanted to highlight. Uh, we're reopening our office on Monday uh, the 15th, so we're excited about that. We've all been working remotely, of course, but uh, we're excited to get back together again and, and starting to take uh, clients into the office a little bit. Um, July 15th is the next major deadline for 2019 personal taxes and some business taxes as well. So that's coming up. So if you know anybody that needs a good CPA that help them save lots of money in taxes, then we're the person to turn them to. So we appreciate that. And uh, Justin Peepgrass, CPA, thank you. Thank you, Justin. We're gonna head it over to, to Liz after uh, Liz Madden. After Liz Madden, it's gonna be Lydia Zamora. Yay. Hi, I'm Liz Madden with A Plus Academy Driving School. So we are hosting the vast majority of our classes on Zoom. So I'm very familiar with doing the format. Um, we are, we, the good news is that DPS has reopened and they are issuing permits and licenses on an appointment only basis. Um, but the good news is they're starting to, you know, get everything back on a roll again. Otherwise, if you know a teenager or an adult who needs either some driving practice or needs to get, you know, their driver's license, uh, send them our way. If they drive like a fool, send them to school. Awesome, Liz. Thank you. Lydia. Hello, this is Lydia with Didi Styles. It's time for a haircut. If you, I'm sure you probably forgot, but here I am. We are safe here. We are um, testing to make sure you don't have a, a temperature, and we are the safest people here. We wear a mask at all times when we're doing our haircut. And also, we cannot forget the hand sanitizer. So if you say, oh, no, gray hair, don't worry. We'll get you all curled up, no grays, and an awesome haircut. So come on in to DD Styles, 1502 East Abram Street. Or you can call 817-303-3735. I'll see y'all there. Bye. Love the energy. Love the energy. Um, we're going to move on over to Phyllis Washington, and after Phyllis Washington, we'll have Sean. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Brian, you look so professional. Thank <laughs> you, thank cool. you. Hey, I wanted to uh, let you guys know, I am currently working with um, a, a business owner that is starting their business, so I can do that as well, help them get um, all situated and, and focus on their goals what you know what their business looks like what they need to do so if you know anyone that's starting a business i can help them so just send them on over to coach bill thank you see y'all later thank you coach phil uh sean what's the news well this is sean abbott formerly of aflac uh my boss didn't like me taking a second job, so they temporarily turned, disabled my writing number, which means this may be my last meeting for a while. However, if there's anybody who knows any other networking groups, my, I posted the email you can reach me at. I'll let you know when and how I can help you in the future. Thank you, Sean. Well, we wish you the best in, in, in any kind of new thing that you're going to be doing. and. You know, it's sad to hear, but, you know, we are going to miss you, and we'll keep the door open for you. Thank you, sir. Um, let's go on over to Tom Vance. And then after Tom Vance, Toby Gilman. You're, you're mute, Tom. There we go. We good? All right, Tom Vance with Advanced Senior Options. Sean, if you're still looking to use your insurance license, we've got a, a home for you. And if you're not captive, you can do whatever you want with us. But anyhow, uh, I have an insurance class coming up in two weeks for people to want to get their insurance license. Right now with Medicare, people are losing their jobs. Uh, they were going to plan on working well past 65. So our business is kind of booming and we're getting more and more on this uh, Zoom meeting since us there. So 
If you know anybody that's still looking to change uh, insurance that's over 65 with Medicare or somebody about to retire, somebody unfortunately been laid off and not coming back, we could definitely help them. Don Vance with Advanced Senior Options. There you go, Sean. There's an opportunity for you. Thank you, Tom. Um, uh, Toby. Hey, hello, everyone. As you can see from the banner behind me, I'm with Latijig. Actually, that's backwards. Digital Corporate Services in the you all probably know from Angie, we do printing, uh, corporate gifts and apparel, but sometimes you uh, might wonder, what the heck is that? We invite you over to our shop here on Station Drive, just off Cooper, to see all the wonderful things. I guarantee you, you'll look and say, I had no idea digital could do that. You get some great ideas for gifts and for uh, 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 your, your promotional items. So uh, come on over and, uh, and visit our shop and see all the wonderful, uh, wonderful things we can make for you. Thanks. Awesome, thank you, Toby. Uh, up next will be Kim Frenner and then uh, Meredith. I don't know if we've gotten to you. Um, so it'll be Kim first and then Meredith. Hey guys, uh, this is Kim Fenner with True Balance Therapeutic Massage. Um, we specialize in helping people with their overall health and wellness through therapeutic massage. Uh, we're back in business and taking on clients. Uh, we are following uh, safety protocols and sanitation protocols. Uh, which uh, you can find on our website. Um, and, you know, for all those who have been stuck at home and stressed out with all this COVID-19 uh, and um, just everything that's going on right now and you need to come in and get a relaxing massage, we're here for you. Again, this is Kim Fenner with True Balance Therapeutic Massage, and I am personally taking on new clients. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Um, Meredith. Hi guys, I'm Meredith with Nurse Next Door. We are here to help you guys if you know anybody, neighbors, loved ones um, who need some home care or maybe they're looking to move back home from different communities. So we would love to help. Um, we do have a program with some of the other nursing homes and senior communities right now where we're connecting younger teenagers or kids with seniors, kind of like a pen pal program, but it's gonna be via Zoom. Um, just to kind of connect people through generations. Um, so if you know anyone who might be interested in doing that and making a connection and kind of bridging that gap, let me know and I would love to connect them. Awesome. Thank you, Meredith. Now, last but not least, I have a phone number. Somebody called in 817-881-1896. Who is that? It's a stalker. I know it's a spy. Corporate spy. Corporate spy. <laughs> Hello, Euler. Well, all right. Okay. And it's probably Amanda Richardson because she is on but does not have. No, that no, that's not me. It's not you. Okay. The corporate spy. I'm telling you. Okay. Well, they're going to learn a lot today. Yes. Prepare to be educated, corporate spy. Um. So let's go around really quickly. We got a, a few minutes here. We got 11 minutes here. Are there any thank yous? Um, I guess what we could do is if you have a thank you, raise your hand. I have my full screen here and I will call upon you. I can't raise my hand, so I'm just going to go in here. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if you realize the uh, uh, host cannot raise their hand in the, in the deal. Uh, but I wanted to thank several people for um, going out on my Google and posting a, um, a review. I really appreciate that. I uh, also want to thank Becky for spending some time with me today to uh, help me write a profile uh, for my board position at River Legacy and, and about why I like River Legacy. Um, and I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch of people for something over the last couple weeks, but uh, thank you all. Meredith does not have a video, so I'm going to go ahead and let her go. She says she does have some thank yous. So, Meredith? My thank yous today. Me and David got some coffee yesterday, so it was great to connect and super fun. Um, Kelly's not here, but we're working together, so thanks to Kelly. And then I'm also working with Angie at Digital Corporate on a fun little project. So those are my thank yous today. Awesome, Meredith. I saw Lydia's hand go up. Lydia? Unmute. Okay. 
I want to thank David Birch um, for coming in, getting a haircut, and then also doing my rug carpet. I want to thank Amanda, Corey, Dwayne, Brian, Ruben, David Curtis, and John Thatcher. Thank y'all very much for always coming in and helping me and supporting me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for making us look good. Otherwise, we'd, we'd be a bunch of uh, hoodlums on here with uh, afros. I know I would. Uh, uh, David. Speak for yourself, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> David, you got, uh, Dave Curtis, you got to thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Coach Phil for the one-on-one uh, -on, -one on Monday. Uh, great getting to know her and her business a little bit. Uh, fun fact, uh, she lived over in Garland, my hometown. So that was uh, cool getting to know that. Um, thanks to Kelly for the one-on-one -on -one the other day and uh, coffee down in Burleson. That was neat seeing the square down there. And then thanks to uh, Meredith for the one-on-one -on -one, uh, over at Urban Alchemy uh, yesterday, I guess it was. So uh, thanks for all that. And I'm setting up, trying to set up some more one-on-ones next week. So looking forward to getting to know everybody a little bit better. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you, David, for helping us. Uh, David is now like our pretty much our full time HR person. Um, yeah. So he helped us uh, onboard our new web developer. So that's cool. Uh, and then offboard some some people that are going off to college. So thank you, because it was funny. Uh, we had a conversation. I said, I, I don't want to deal with it. Can you deal with it? And he said, Yeah, I don't know how many times you say that to me, but I'll do it. <laughs> So it's nice. I don't like to deal with HR. So thank you for taking that headache off of my, my plate. Um, anybody else? <laughs> anybody else? Coach Phil? I just want to thank David Curtis. Uh, just a, a fun guy and learning about his background and just really appreciate our one-on-one. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, anybody else? Becky? Yeah, thank you so much. So um, I guess Kelly's not here, but I did have a great one-on-one -on -one with her. And um, I have a thank you, big, big thank you to Jennifer for um, getting Price Right to come out and take down a tree that was looming over my, a dead tree that was looming over my house. And um, right back at you, Robert, for a great one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you. And uh, do we have anybody? Toby, do you have a thank you? Just uh, quickly, uh, thank you for uh, Sam doing business with us on the on the PPE sanitizer products at the very beginning. If you weren't on, he, he held up the bottle several times. So thank you for that. And now the chambers uh, doing a lot with us on, on all the PPE. So uh, you can go through us, you can go through them. But, uh, but uh, thank you for, for thinking of us during these COVID times. Awesome. Thank you, Toby. And I'm going to thank Sam Elliott in advance. I know we've been working on a couple of things, but we are now looking for telecommunications. So um, true business telecommunications. So uh, we'll be reaching out to you on that. Um, so that being said, if there's no any other thank yous, I don't see anybody. Last call for thank yous. Robert, the floor is you. Oh, Sam. Sam. <laughs> Did anyone go to that BDAC meeting last week where they were discussing reopening the chamber? Did you go to that, Brian? I, I was not able. Um, I've been so swamped. Uh, but oh, I do there? know. Well, oh, Dwayne did. Dwayne gave me. Corey did? Okay. Corey, yes. Corey, could you fill us in on what's the. Oh, there's a test? Um, yeah, this, this is a test. Yeah. Basically, like we're looking into, and we approved the, uh, God, um, the ability to start using it, the chamber soon. And basically, you will have to practice all the safe distancing. Um, you'll have to wear a mask when you come in. Once you sit down in the conference room, you can take the mask off. That way, we can hear each other. But uh, large groups like ours will not be allowed to meet yet. So we're going to still be off site. I did hear uh, I did hear that uh, from Henry, and this is not yet um, um, finalized. But they said they are talking to 1010 North Collins for bigger groups like ours to meet. 
Yeah, they're trying to find some locations, and I have a couple others up my sleeve that we could go to if that doesn't work out. Corey, I, I, I talked to uh, Dwayne about that, and he said that uh, you, you're right. We might have to break up into two groups to use the uh, chamber facilities, and lastly, doing it outside at some of the parks in the area. I'd prefer that I we guess stay it's just together. About getting a little bit too hot to do that these days. I'd prefer to stay together and not break apart the group. Yeah, getting I think we all of our large group are split up. Right, but out of 62 known members, only 23 to 26 are attending on a weekly basis. I agree, but that's still over the 20. Yeah, you're right. That's well, all I'll allow. It's 20 we, right now. We could reach out to to some of these bigger places and see what what could we, that has a bigger area than the conference room. But that will be a later discussion, Corey, uh, Sam, and we can. I'll email the, Dwayne and the restaurants that are opening up, like Division Street Diner. They've got a room off to the side, plenty of room for all of us. Okay. Then uh, I've t talked to uh, for something else outside of the chamber, possibly using the Masonic Lodge dining hall, dining room. It's pretty good size. That might be a possibility. It might not. We had our first lodge meeting this this week, so. We had 60 people there in the dining room and in the lodge room. So there's some possibilities we look into that will probably be free. Okay. I believe that, oh, and we voted at the Masonic Lodge to keep our membership in the chamber. Uh, Corey Harris, myself, forced the issue. And uh, they asked, well, who's going? And I said, well, I'm there all the time. So is Corey, the other Corey. But uh, being that they're a member, they probably allow us to borrow it. Just saying. So there's options if 1010 doesn't work out, but I, I vote we keep the group together. I agree. I agree. Well, all righty. Well, um, we will discuss this. I think that uh, as uh, vice chair, I'll pass this over to Dwayne and allow him to. Why are you giving me that look, Heather? Because you can't pass it over to dad. Oh, I can't pass it over to dad. He's not here today. I know. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's go into our presentation. I do want to be respectful of everybody's time today. Uh, Robert, Robert, you got a uh, presentation for us? 